All right, I'm here today to demonstrate to you how a shipwright like myself might be able to identify the difference between red oak and white oak when purchasing a supply of oak to build a boat. Now, I've got some red oak over here in the tray. This piece of red oak is in a pool of water, and this piece of red oak is in a pool of denatured alcohol. Now, I'm going to go back to that in a little while, and I've got another demonstration set up in front of me here. And I've got some oak to my right here. This row of oak is white oak, and this row of oak is red oak. You're going to be able to tell the difference immediately when I demonstrate this. And uh, I'd just like to tell you some of the problems using red oak in boat work. It soaks up a tremendous amount of water because it's very porous between the annual rings, between the growth rings. The porosity is actually continuous like straws from one end of the tree to the other. So it soaks up water very, very fast and large volumes of water. So in a boat, it can soak fresh water in from the top and create fresh water rot, or it can uh, soak salt water in from the bottom. Now with the induction of DC current into the salt water, it can break down the salt, and that causes tremendous problems of the wood. And I'm going to go into that a little bit later. And uh, at this point, I'm going to show you this little demonstration on how you identify the difference between the two. So I'm going to pick up two pieces of this oak over here on the right. One's going to be a piece of red oak, and one's going to be a piece of white oak. I'm going to dip them into this alcohol, and you're going to see that the alcohol will soak up through the red oak almost immediately and appear on the top. All right, what you can see going on here is the alcohol is starting to appear on the top of this piece of wood right here right away. Now you see a little bit of capillary action over here on this piece around the outside, but that is just on the outside. And then you see a little bit of alcohol appearing right here, but that's in a check. That check is on one of the medullary rays that are 90 degrees to the annual rings. But you don't see any alcohol coming up in between the growth rings where you see it here just all over the place. So. This red oak is continuous pour. It's like straws going from one end of the wood to the other. And the porosity in between the annual rings and the white oak is kind of like bamboo. It's segmented, so it blocks that transfer or that capillary action. This is what's going on over here is capillary action. And in this one, the capillary action is certainly less, much less. Now I've lowered in two more pieces of oak. The oak on my right is Norwegian oak from an eight meter that I own out of the floor timbers and the oak on the left was sold as Danish white oak. But I'm not so sure that it's white oak because look at it soaking that alcohol to the surface. To me, that's a species of red oak. Now white oak is used for liquid barrels like whiskey barrels because the whiskey stays in the barrel and red oak is only used for grain. If you used a red oak barrel for whiskey, the whiskey would be out on the floor in no time and uh, that would be a problem. Now I've put two more pieces of oak into the alcohol and I think you'll be able to tell quite easily which one is red oak and which one is white oak. Look at the alcohol starting to appear on the surface of this piece right here. The porosity is so great that the alcohol just sucks right up to the top with capillary action in no time flat. You can actually see the medullary rays appearing very much before your very eyes here. Those are emanate from the center of the tree 90 degrees to the annual rings, and all the checking always appears on the medullary rays in oak and every kind of oak. The appearance of the medullary rays does not necessarily tell you whether it's red or white oak. This being a piece of red oak, it's got medullary rays in it, and so also does the white oak. It's very hard to see them right here, maybe in the camera, but they're in here 90 degrees to the annual ring as it is well. Now, obviously, this piece here doesn't have any alcohol appearing on the surface. It's got a little bit of capillary action coming up around the outside, but the center isn't sucked up any alcohol whatsoever. Now, that is the demonstration that you need to perform. That is the acid test right there between red and white oak. And now we're going to go over to this other little demonstration over here. Now, this is kind of going to speak volumes to you about how much water a piece of oak just this size can hold. Now I'm going to pick it up and put my mouth against this end of it and blow air in it and you're going to see the alcohol just dropping right out of the bottom.
Now, isn't that something? Now, I guarantee you, I didn't have any alcohol in my mouth. That was all contained in that piece of oak. And that's the problem with red oak right there. Now, when salt water soaks up into red oak, and if the red oak is sticking out of the water, what happens is, as the salt water gets above the water line, it starts to dry out at the top, and it leaves the salt behind. It's like a desalination plant. And then as the water dries out, well, it soaks up some more water. And that dries out at the top, too. And the volume of salt retains into the oak, and it builds and builds and builds as it soaks and dries and soaks and dries. And the content of salt just gets to be so much that with the induction of DC current, DC current is conducted by the salt water. The ions in the salt conduct the electricity, and it breaks down the salt into hydrochloric acid in solution with water and sodium hydroxide. Now, sodium hydroxide is lye. It pretty much burns up anything you put in it, whether it's metal, wood, skin, or otherwise. You don't want it in your boat.